because you said you were like lit your if you had an appointment which is your... about 10 years too late but um i'm learning how to drive which is crazy stressful but i i, I went back to stay at my mum's because I kind of know the roads a little bit better. Yeah. So you thought to yourself, if I'm going to learn how to drive, it's best that I do it in an area that's familiar. It's, yeah, yeah a, little, a little bit. And just like that thing of like, I'm going off what I know from being in the back of my mum's car or whatever when I was like Younger. Kid. Do you know what I mean? Just it's a little bit more familiar. Um, do I need to do this when we start rolling? Or that? We probably start rolling now, to be fair. If we're rolling, rolling already, yeah. We start rolling. We start rolling, yeah. Oh, have we? Oh, yeah. Shit. All right. I've got ready. Let's go. Shit. What's this? Yep, the food's coming all of it. Yeah, we started rolling, man. Usually, just try. And, I, I don't really want it to be like. I need to make um, sure I turn my phone off. Yeah, that's cool. but even if it goes off, silence it. All right. But straight yeah. away, I just want to chat to you. Okay, cool. cool. You know, straight away, I'm like, I just have questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Roll through, Vuj. So no rules. By the way, I've, I've, so what, what's the deal? Do I just order whatever you want? Um, mm. if you, do you? Wow. Well, do you use delivery? Yeah. 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 Just deliver. I kind of spat okay. my glasses off my face. And I. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wicked. Mm. What did you? What, what did you get? We got Caribbean. Like your nice. Caribbean, yeah, but is, that chicken. Is that the no nice one stop? One stop? No, no. Nah, this no, is from Green. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All Green's down the road. This is like Hornsey. It's mm. a little bit safer. Oh, oh nice. All right. I'm so hungry, but this chicken from Brown Eagle's like, God, it's not jerk. Is it? Yeah, they might nice. have to compromise it because of. Chicken. Oh, that's not. That's a it's bit like upsetting. Barbecue vibes. Is it? Good. It's good though. Brown Eagle don't let man down. Hmm. It don't let man yeah, down. Another chicken, good. Well, that's not that's when I walk past the so nice one stop, but it's it's the uh, other one you're talking about. Mm. Oh, try it. You can try it. Was that no, I'm just, bro, do your thing, man. This is nice, bro. I'll be honest with you, bro. Do you know what drew me to you straight away? The obvious thing between guys, I guess, football. So seeing you as an Arsenal fan, mm. but you so openly an Arsenal fan, mm. but then you're a Hollywood actor was one of the most confusing things I've ever seen in my life. Because I'm thinking, <laughs> how many times can you go Hollywood and talk about Arsenal? And then I thought to myself, I, I, I don't know if he's a real football fan. Bro, I've gone to LA, and when oh. I saw you there, I was like, what is God? He's a football <laughs> fan, like, he's here. He's in LA, there's gorgeous women, great weather, <laughs> everyone's wearing shorts, and he's inside here watching football. Is yeah, that something funny. that you've like, do you like, is it just mean that much to you? It doesn't matter where you are in the world, like, I need to watch a football game. I think so, yeah. I mean, the first thing that's weird is like, because I, I had that a couple of times, even like interviews and stuff, they're like, oh, like, you know, Hollywood action and stuff. And I've just never really, with all due respect to the, the powers that be that are there and the, the nice people that work there, I've just never identified with with, mm. with Hollywood. And so that, but, but a lot of, I guess, if anyone does know who I am, it's probably from an American movie or playing an American m more times than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that means that people are kind of a bit shocked when I'm like a Arsenal fan, or even that I'm from London or whatever, I mm. think. But yeah, I've been, been a big Arsenal fan for a while and um, it does mean watching it sometimes at, you know, mad times in the morning. Like I think in LA it was probably- we were Mad there. early, bro. Yeah, exactly. Mad early, bro. Yeah, if it's a, if it's a sort of midday kickoff, it's like, you know, it's, you kind of have to, I don't know, even stay up the night before or whatever. But I think we were there for like a late afternoon kickoff. Yeah. So it was like nine or 10 in the morning or something like that. And people were still drinking beer and I was and like, people oh, still cold. This yeah. is what happens, oh, that <laughs> was weird to me. So you proper keep up with the Premier League and whenever you're abroad? I tried to, try to, I tried to, yeah, I have to be honest, there was one season I was in, I was in Canada for seven months and uh, I slipped up massively and we were just in <laughs> such a remote part of the, of the world that like I, I couldn't keep up and to be honest it was, it, it was kind of an Arsenal season that sort of followed the trend of, you know, the, the, that, that decade where we just kind of, Bit, it fell apart at a similar time in the season, we ended up kind of just ending up in Europa and like our hopes of getting anything more out of it mm. sort of fell to pieces so I didn't feel like I missed out but I definitely the season the, ne the next season I definitely felt like I, it wasn't my place to like talk about Arsenal amongst my friends because I was oh, like, actually I haven't there. seen how this guy's been doing the last 12 months you know I was just I was out of touch a bit but I do I do generally speaking I do try and keep up with it yeah you're um, watching now how are you finding Emery <sighs> yeah it's um how am I finding Emery? Um, so I probably was, with all due respect to Mr. Wenger, I probably was a, a Wenger out person. I just think time, time had come or whatever. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I really like uh, the impact that Emery kind of seemed to be making initially. Like he seemed to be that guy who was very kind of, uh, had a real sort of emphasis on um, tactics and statistics. And uh, I think if you could sort of hold Arsenal to account for uh, anything it was probably not being adaptable game mm. to game mm. I, I sometimes mm. felt like the same side I saw lose against 
you know, whoever turned up and lost again in the same way the next week. And that was frustrating. I don't necessarily feel like I've seen that with Emery. Like I, I'm, I feel like seeing someone who's trying to make us a little bit more adaptable, yeah. mm. but it's not quite working. And, and um, for as much promise as we have, like I think it's still a, a defensive issue more than anything. I, 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 watching Arsenal defend is really not good for my heart and my mental <laughs> health. Bad, isn't it? I'm Man. still defending. is so poor. Right? Did you watch Sheffield game? Oh, wow. uh, yeah, d- uh, that was Monday night, wasn't it? Monday yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I watched that with my brother and heartbreaking. And just like... I wonder what it is that makes a team like Sheffield, obviously I know they're, they're up in the Prem right now, mm, mm. play such forward... F- they were playing quite forward whenever they get the ball. Obviously they defend really well. Mm. But is it like a desire thing? Because yeah. they seem to have so much more desire Damn. to get the win. Mm. Dan Arsenal, who obviously are much more, tat- I mean, f- better technical side. Mm. Do you know what? Like, so what's the element of desire? When does this desire come into it and and change the balance of the odds of who should win? We right. should ask ourselves in, in football, a way, and in life as well, maybe. But yeah, because that's what we should ask ourselves. Because we gravitated towards Sheffield. Well, I love Sheffield United. But I, mm. I, I couldn't tell you why. Hmm. I'm so like, like I wasn't upset. I can honestly tell you, I wasn't upset. And it's like, when I look at stories like Sheffield United, they have no, some people would say, no right to be in the Premier League, playing like this, having the best defence in the Premier League, coming from the Championship. It just makes you look at it from a life aspect, like, raw. around there, there must be a very united group of people mm. that don't really care what's happening in the Premier League. This is how we're going to play. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm. And I kind of like that. That's like, even going back to what you said before, it's kind of like you for it. It's like, I said to these guys, he doesn't come across as a Hollywood actor at all. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if I was in a film with Leonardo DiCaprio, everyone in the hood is going to know this. <laughs> everyone. And Jennifer uh, Aniston. Jennifer uh, Aniston, like, this is mad. I remember watching the film and watching your character and then we were talking about the Black Mirror reference before you came as well. And, like, it was a completely different role. But then mm. when I meet you, it's just, it's all a bit cor- like a bit weird to me. Like, I don't understand how you're just so down to earth. And you, like I said, go to your Instagram. The only thing that sells that you might be an actor is you, you got a blue tick. Have you always been like that, or is it that's just funny. like a I don't know? Thing? That that's kind, but I feel like to be honest, like, it's weird for me too. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's of it's weird. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. No, no, no. It's it's weird for me being um being you know to an extent on set with these these people. Like you know, I, I, I mean, like Leo, for example, someone I obviously grew up watching, you know, yeah. Friends is kind of how I learned an American accent. Do you know what I mean? Like I used oh, to watch serious? that with my sister. So, mm. so being on set with, with, with Jen or Leo, whoever it is, 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 you know, there is an element of like holding down the fact that you're, you're a fan first and foremost. And then, and then, you know, and then it's about sort of getting to work and, and appreciating that they're your colleague as mad as that sounds, but it's, it's weird for me too. I find it odd. You know what I mean? And, and there are like pinch, pinch yourself moments, like the whole time when I'm at work, I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, I feel like I won a competition, you know, but... <laughs> I was wondering, because, I mean, acting is something that I see myself doing down the line as mm. well, and I maybe mean, mm. have done character Course. work. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thoroughly, thoroughly... Your stuff's so funny, man. Thank I've you, seen bro. it. So funny. Thoroughly enjoy it. I've been yeah. taking a bit of a break from cre- creating. I think mentally acting is such a, such a skill, mm. mm-hmm. especially get professional acting in terms of on set. I've done that once, mm. and I was like, oh my God. Oh, I did it. I like improvising, but... On set acting with the markers on the floor, right, having right, to right. repeat lines, having to remember lines, your movement, eye mm. contact. How do you find it? How, how have you found that kind of the, the, the job of acting? Mm. I always feel like we're mm. always acting, mm. yeah. Mm. But the job of acting and making it a profession, yeah, that's so interesting. Mentally, how have you found? How, how do you go through the the, the process? It's a dub- It's a weird double edged sword. Like my relationship with acting is weird because if I'm honest. And I, and I only kind of sort of happened on this after someone asked me a, a kind of a crazy question. I met this amazing director and about three questions in, he just said, why are you an actor? And I was a bit like, nice. oh, I, th- I thought we were going to do like the traffic sort of conversation and like how the weather's different over yeah. here and like you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, where yeah, I live. Know. But you've just asked me why I do what mm. I do, which was kind of crazy. And, and it sort of forced a bit more of an existential sort of, you know, mm. uh, search. And I was like, wow, I was like, I guess I, I guess I like borrow identity. Like, to be honest, I think it came from being quite insecure as a kid, still insecure in lots of ways, but, but being 
insecure as a kid and, and not necessarily owning my own identity and so quite enjoying like borrowing from other people mm-hmm. does that make mm-hmm. sense that yeah, makes perfect sense. Sense. that's yeah. kind of lit I can't you know lie what I mean and, and, and the danger obviously is you run away from your own problems you don't work on yourself <laughs> and you play this, play this, play this. so I've had to I've had to do that Interesting. in the process of growing up but, uh-huh. but it's definitely been a case of borrowing identity and, and with that I say a double edged sword because I find it incredibly difficult and I find it strenuous and stressful and um uh, emotionally really, really challenging, but I'm also addicted to that that kind of task of embodying someone else and it being kind of impossible. You can't fully 100% mm. transform into someone else and that's what kind of keeps me on the hook and keeps me kind of, um, yeah, sort of chasing it, um, which is which is, which is is weird. I know that sounds pr- proper. No, it doesn't sound weird <laughs> because I, I, can, I can totally relate. I think especially you're always, I think identity is something, so, Identity can be a very shifting thing as mm-hmm. well. I think mm-hmm. depending on how you grow up and the surroundings and your environment can have a big impact on you. Yes. Like your identity is almost always being shaped and, and changed. And and as an actor, I guess you are playing identities. Mm. You're not mm. playing yourself. You're playing yeah. And you bring that into the world. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what question I was really going to go on to there. Sorry, I, I, it no, went, no, it I get went it. Would you say you're quite an existential guy then? Um... By the way, I've already failed. I haven't even managed to order anything. Sorry, I'm being. <laughs> what, on, was it, what was the name of what you got? Because I might just get. Is it bad to? Eat? I mean, eating wings on camera is probably the dumbest thing you could do. But I think that's why I was going. I was going <laughs> yeah, to. Where do you want to get wings from? Uh, from wherever you. The, what was the Caribbean joint that you got? I your, yeah, my, I'm not my phone. Um, I was going to say also, watch out for your um, the, the 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 things making a bit. Is noise. that causing sound? Just put it like up your if you can Should like. I, do, just I can so just it, take it off. Yeah, it's just, this is this is this is just about, in case. Twenty five pounds from the Whitechapel Road. Yeah. It's nothing. No, no worries. It's nothing special. Um, yeah, that's cold. That's cold, though. So you want me to get you wings from the place that I got wings? Yeah, please. No problem. Sorry, got thank you, man. Appreciate no, it. It's so, just like um, I can kind of relate what you're saying. And you said you were mm, insecure mm. as a kid, and there's still those insecurities that that maybe yeah. you face. What would you perhaps say? Are you open to say what would you say those insecurities are, or have been, or the ones that you're always kind of working on or aware yeah. of? Yeah, I think um. Wow, I mean, there's a host of them. Do you know what I mean? There's a oh. whole load. But um, I think as a kid, um, one of them was one of them was like like identity as a male as well, which is something that obviously like still continuing to explore and trying to improve myself in 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 that regard. And um, I can remember being at school and being around like a bunch of lads, like I was literally like waiting for a lesson or something to start, and we were just like stood outside the classroom, and and um, everyone was just talking about like the last time they cried. It's like yeah, like I can't remember the last time I cried. Like, you know, like, someone's like yeah, yeah, like, it's probably been like four years since I cried or whatever. And I was thinking I cried last week. What the hell is going? I think I cried last night. You know what is going on? Like, <laughs> and I was, I was, I was terrified by that. And so I've always been quite, um, probably fair to say, quite emotional, quite sensitive. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like easily hurt or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't know where yeah, that yeah. came from. Yeah. Got like the best family in the world, but just kind of what you know what I mean? Like. Um, was but so that that was one of the things I guess when I was younger that sticks out as like being a and, and then and then uh, you know identity as you said is so it's so broad it's so shifting um, it changes through experience and over time and so um, yeah it's one of those things that like continuing to kind of work on but I think I think I really only just turn my attention to looking after myself in between roles if that makes sense okay I yeah. kind of like was just fully focused on whatever character I was playing and then kind of just getting through the periods in between works try and get the next job it's like well that there is the the opportunity to work on yourself and prepare yourself so that when you come home from the end of the day on set having played a character like you're in a good place and you know how to take care of yourself whereas before that I'd say before I was even like 25 I was just going like job to job and just kind of like just trying to get through the the process because I found it really emotionally taxing Mm. do you know what's difficult when you say things uh, what's difficult for me to comprehend because how mentally strong you actually are because for me I can and Vuj has been there to witness it I've had some really difficult times and then it's like mm. you've got to go on camera and keep smiling and after yeah. a little while you're not even aware of like well I wasn't aware 
of how bad I actually looked because it's all you kind of you're like there's no blueprint it's just like well I'm doing this isn't it wow. how difficult yeah, yeah, is yeah. it for you to focus on being somebody else if you have a problem that you need to tend to at that time to do with you how difficult is it to balance the two of I've got a personal problem mm. but then I've got this character I kind of have to learn how to perfect and I ain't got time to deal with this but is this really going to affect that like wow. how do you deal with that did you ever have that in your yeah life? or did you ever yeah. have that sorry yeah. no that's so that's so interesting I think so I think to be honest I've had moments where um, I've actually really wanted to play roles and I've gone I don't know if if I can like I don't know if I'm in a place right now where I feel like I, ca I can do it do you know what I mean like I don't I just don't know whether um, the emotional tax this will have on me is is actually worth it like long term um, wow you know to, to be completely to be completely honest um and then again i've had opportunities whereby i've been able to play a character and it's been so amazing and it's been part of the identity journey it's been like oh well having played this character i've actually really like been able to better myself um uh and and and, and improve and 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 it's kind of forced me to reflect on myself in ways that i might not have it's it's given me skills or kind of an adaptability that I didn't have before going into the process. And like, so grateful for that. It's one of the things I, I, I really love about about my job is like, you know, what other job allows you to go and embody, you know, as closely as possible, all these other jobs and all these other identities, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, it is mad. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's such a It's such a privilege that like, yeah. it's not 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 lost on me, but I guess it, for, for, for you too, it's that thing of like what you were saying. It's like, if you're, if you're in the, the public eye for one of a less kind of overused phrase, but if you're in the public eye and, and, and there's a spotlight on you and you know, you, you know this yourselves, you can do one interview and you can be slightly off key and people will have an opinion and it will be mm -hmm. in the comment section or whatever, or that will be the, that will be the prevailing opinion of you and that person's community, however big for a while, because they saw you on a day where you had some terrible news, but you didn't quite manage to smile hard enough. You know, that's like yeah. with that, without getting into, you know, Tiny violin because we're very lucky. It, it it it's it's real. No, I think it, I think it really is. Mm. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess I guess from personal experience and being in, in some sort of the public eye because what we do is we're always on camera. Yeah. We're, we're speaking. We're changing. We're growing. Mm. And in that process, you're going to make mistakes and errors, and you're going to get pulled up on things. And maybe as uh, maybe I can relate to you in that element as well. I, I do find mm. myself quite a sensitive character right i would say have been quite emotional before now kind of working on it a lot mm. more to be more grounded and and stable yeah yeah but it can really can be a tough process do uh, you find do you find comedy is a good outlet for that uh, do you see a link between the two? It, it was it's an amazing outlet yeah i guess for me comedy and being funny on camera and making mm. characters i make myself laugh and then, because I'm laughing, <laughs> yeah, I'm no, like, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Maybe others will find this, you know. And yeah, then, and you have to be honest about that. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, my humor is definitely not for everyone. Uh, I mean, I get for a while I haven't done it, perhaps because I've been more of on a personal journey mm. of, as you said, self betterment and self development. Mm. Where mm. you, I don't know, for a while I just felt like I'm now doing this just to pl for an audience. And it stopped being about me finding it funny. Right, right. And it was more like, that would be good for that. And that would be good for that. And, that, and then you're not doing mm. it from, that's funny for me. Let me just do it. Because I think I want to bring that into the world. Right, right, right. And I right, think right. that process can be fascinating where you kind of go, oh shit, who am I? Yeah. Because yeah, then you yeah, have yeah. to take yourself back and almost be like, wait, <clears throat> who am I in all these processes? Right. Because it can be such a mentally taxing, I guess, I guess, uh, way of life as well. But I think what you yeah. said is, is, very, is very crucial as well is that, it's it's also great to be in front of the camera and be doing what we're doing because mm. we're taking on roles like now mm. in these roles I'm just trying to be myself not trying but mm. being myself mm. conversing with you and whoever comes here mm. whereas where you're, you're an actor and or a comedian you are putting on an act right 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 and then where where are you and when is the act sure when does yeah. the act stop when does the act start yeah yeah that's and, and that's and what I was gonna say as well like, when does the act hard, stop man. when does the act start for you that's in that's interesting. You know the thing that I like, some like people ask sometimes is um like about method acting. Like people are like, I was just going to talk about method acting. Yeah. I talk about Bashi. He's a re he's really amazing at that. Oh Bashi right, Thomas. right. Yeah. I'd love to. So th the truth is, like, I have not done the research, nor have I read all the books. I'm untrained. I just I I don't know. But method acting as a term is 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 strange to me only because everyone's got a method, right? Every act has a method, so it's like a, a bit. It's a bit of a, a weird one, and 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 I feel like um it's hard to determine, it's hard to call. 
it's hard to label method acting, you know, because the, the, the extremist sort of idea of method acting is that like someone is that character from the moment they start the, you know, the, the, the shooting of that job and then they go home as that character and they eat, drink and sleep as that character off set and they come on set and they're still that character and they, you know, and, and that's like really intense. And then there are other people who, you know, they might, I don't know how they define it, but they might say that, you know, as soon as the camera starts rolling and until we wrap that day, I'm in character. And then like, what are they any less of a method actor or are they, is that not method acting or do you see what I mean? Yeah, 100%. It's, kind of, Everyone's, it's a method, isn't it? Like everyone has right. their own unique method of acting. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird one. And I think I found that like case by, uh, to kind of treat it sort of case by case, I think the only time, and I, I think it's kind of like each their own and, you know, it it, it 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 is whatever you know works for you really so long as it doesn't infringe on someone else's you know Situation. process I, I i have an issue with method acting when it gives people an excuse to kind of mistreat the people around them it's like you can't be spitting in people's faces and being like oh i was like, well i'm method acting you know it, <laughs> it, it needs do you know what i mean you still yeah. need to be held to account for how you're treating the people you're working mm. with and you can't treat your missus like that well darling i'm method, I'm method acting, acting so i've got to sleep with these other women over here do you know what i mean <laughs> that's not that's not gonna fly so it's um it's 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 a it's a it's a strange one method acting but again i i come from like not an educated place with regards to method acting i don't know um as i say the kind of the, the workings and the technicalities of it but i think sometimes I have sort of seen it, not 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 directly necessarily, but I have um, witnessed it being used as an excuse for certain behaviour that I can't wow. I can't really abide to be honest. It's wow. very interesting. Yeah, to be honest. I mean, what's his name? Heath Ledger obviously did was doing method mm. acting right for the Joker. I think so. That's I think what so. I, heard. I heard. I might be completely wrong. I do mm. apologise if I am wrong. No. no and did know. you watch the new Joker? And it's... how did you find it? Have you seen it as well? I have seen it. Yeah. No. I Cancelled the it's, other day because I had. Film. It's brought up a lot of. I mean, it's, so I've we, seen it. It's, can we can? I guess without, without spoiling. Spoilers, without spoilers. I feel like you. Have you seen it? No. You haven't seen it. Is, are you upset about it being spoiled? I'm not really upset about those things. I'm like whatever in it. Like I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to spoil it for a, 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 anyone. To be to be honest, because I haven't watched the previous ones, so I only have this oh, perception. Oh, so you didn't the watch the previous Joker, the Heath Ledger one, etc. No, it is. For, I haven't seen this one, but I heard this one's better. But the Heath Ledger Joker, oh. honestly, Vuj. If he tells me he's somebody else on camera, off camera, I don't believe him. It is perfection. I agree, I agree. It is absolute. And and it was what I was going to talk about when it came to Bashi as well, because oh, I find acting now very terrifying. Very, very terrifying. Because I only realised most of my flaws being around people with a completely different perspective. Hmm. So where I'm from, like where I'm from in my area, it's like we all just think the same. That I can justify all my behaviour because everyone else is going to say it. And then when you take yourself out of that equation and you put yourself somewhere else and all the things that you made excuses for and then you've got people like, for example, David around me or my friend Mitch or my friend mm. Harry who have recently come around me or there's loads of people. I've missed out so much people but mm -hmm. Yinka definitely as well. The perspective they give you that makes you go, wait a minute, what am I doing? So if I was an actor and I had to play several different roles, I potentially would get several different perspectives Mm. which would make me think about my own behaviour more, which I think would terrify me, would genuinely terrify me because it's bad enough having to hear from my best friend like Paul, and you have to sit with that and be like, all right, cool. Right. I need to change that. Imagine I'm speaking to myself. Imagine wow. I've taken on a role wow. yeah. and I've done something and then it's made me go, but wait, why did I do... Bro, I think I would yeah. build a coke addiction and call it a day mix. <laughs> I've heard there's a lot of coke addictions in that <laughs> business. It's a lot, yeah, but it's, it's so important to yeah I guess remain introspective but then also I guess that goes back to kind of what I was saying in terms of looking after yourself and giving you the kind of okay. skills of safe self maintenance so that yeah. when you come across something like that you're like okay I can learn from this you know I'm not going to let this eat me up I'm not going to beat myself over the head with this new piece of information I'm going to use it in a constructive way but that's uh. so I think that's so true by the way um, Bashi uh, Ashley Thomas like just oh. an unbelievable creative what, what oh. did he say about because I, I've I never him. spoken to well Chucky's the one that's told me but I was thinking about Bashi today and I was just like it's all when he was younger like my idol Bashi like this massive massive character Incredible. and he was known for a particular thing and mm. he's rebranded himself Ashley Thomas as an actor now and I've heard that on the set of like Top Boy the character he plays in Top Boy the whole time he's on the set he is that character wow to the point where he's like walking past Kano and screw facing him and then walking off and Chuck <laughs> and I was like no way and then like Kano's having apparently told Chucky like oh that's, that's what he does when he's on set and it's like wow. it's very interesting 
way to condition your mindset to do your job. Whereas uh, mm. with me, I, I like, for example, before we do anything like this, I need to chill. I need to proper relax and just like Fair. not really think of much just so I can just take in all the information from the situation that presents itself. So mm-hmm. I am terrified at the prospect of... I think uh, maybe you are terrified because it's you have to be exposed, I think, yeah, as an actor. And exposed. you have to be vulnerable mm. and mm. in touch with your deepest depths. Yeah, yeah. Would you say you've gone there and faced kind of those those demons or had to face your dark side? It's, dark side. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's interesting because, again, you know, like so lucky. First of all, I've got no qualifications. I do what I love for a living. So it's like I'm hesitant to complain. For a, do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally yeah, get you. To be able to do what you love for a living. Like, I don't like complaining. You do, yeah, like, I don't I, like it. I don't, right. right. I, it doesn't resonate. Yeah. yeah. Or when I do complain, it, I feel shit. But because I think complaining is a way out. Right. See, see I, had to, I had to play you in a film. I would have found that out on set with a hundred people and be like, oh my God, I've been complaining my whole life. At least I get to find out this information. Just me and he might have a bit of a cry and I'd be like, all right, I'm ready now for the world. Like finding that in front of a hundred people, I think I'll go crazy, yeah. It's Sorry. A lot to- no, no, not at all. You're, you're right, like with an audience there. I, I don't know whether, I think honestly, like genuinely, Heath Ledger's experience and what I learned about it and, and the way that that performance affected me, both in terms of... Um, it as a piece of art and then him as a person and, and learning about what he kind of went through in the process like it was a real um not for a second am I trying to compare myself to Heath Ledger I wouldn't I wouldn't dare but but it was a, as someone who looks up to him I was like wow I I need to be careful and I think it was a message to every young actor it was like you, you need could to you be careful couple, could you just go into detail some of the things that you're actually speaking about sure so so Heath obviously having played the the Joker in um in the Dark Knight yeah. um uh, shortly I think after the process of playing that role and, and during the shooting of another film which I think was called Dr. Panassus's Imaginarium um, uh, he um, it, it's kind of difficult to speak on because I don't know the, the exact the, details exactly, but yeah. I think it's understood that, that um, Heath died by suicide and I think a lot of people speculated that you know there was a, a link between what he'd gone through during the process of, of playing that role and and um, the way in which he passed away. And I think it was just, um, yeah, a, a, a lesson to to everybody, you know, um, to just kind of be mindful within, I guess, the acting <clears throat> community. And, and of course, the wider community, when you look at how, also when you look at how suicide, just like, you know, um, how ravaging it is and how it disproportionately affects men as well, you know, it's just, it's just worth taking like serious note of. But, that that role for me was so powerful that I was like, they should retire the they should retire the shirt. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I was almost like, I, I just when Suicide Squad came out. To be completely honest, I was a bit upset because I was just like, I didn't. It was almost too soon. Like, it sounds maybe it sounds a bit silly, but I was, I was like, I just it's almost too soon. And I will say that, um, you know, there's there's no touching uh, Heath's legacy, but what um. Joaquin Phoenix, who's one of my favorite actors, maybe my favorite, is able to do with this role with the new Joker, is provide a kind of it's it's almost like an unofficial prequel to Heath's role. It's it's done in such a beautiful way that for me it doesn't in any way step on the toes of what Heath did. It uh, actually almost pays homage to it and says this is you know potentially the hi- the history of that character. And I'm not not giving anything away there, but it's no, no, it's, it's, cool. it's really beautifully done. It's it's mm. it's special, man. And when that, did you go to cinema? Uh, Sorry. when it no. came out, who did I go with? Yeah, my boys from like sick form. That's cold. Yeah, shout nice. out to Teller and stuff. Is yeah, it just linked up with my, nice. my old squad, and nice then um, nice. yeah, went to watch it. A very interesting movie. I think a lot of people mm. took away, the, I guess, that kind of mental element of maybe society. Mm. Uh, Don't you find it funny though that when something like, for example, Hollywood has presented this piece of art? Sorry to cut you no, about. Okay you know, the mental state of an individual which led to, obviously, The Dark Knight. Mm. And it was resented. Like, everything I've heard about it from a lot of people is like, that shouldn't be in cinemas. Well, not from people that mm. obviously I speak to, but when I read reports and I saw things on Twitter, people were outraged. And I was like, mm. but if... Obviously, that's an exaggeration. Or I imagine it's an exaggeration of life because my man became the Joker and became a madman. But surely that is a reality for some people that should be exposed in some type of way to the public just so there's an awareness because... Especially when you hear how that character, if it was method acting, a man done the same thing in real life and ended up, mm. protect, you know, allegedly taking his own life. Like, mm. maybe we should be exposed to things like this to educate ourselves. It's very, I mean, it, it, seems, it seems very complex, but also, I guess, very simple. Because uh, I guess it shows why he became the character. And it 
shows his suffering right. as a human being wow. and it shows what he went through in his private life obviously with his mother in that in the mm. film mm. who was who was not very mentally well it mm. shows so many different sides to a human being and how maybe malleable, I don't know if that's the right word, how mm. our brains and how our experiences can shape who we are as yeah. people and how it can lead you to, I guess, darkness or, or committing various acts and maybe yeah. how Heath as well, maybe in another way, a different way, who knows what he was going through for him to be triggered in certain ways to lead to perhaps yeah. you know, what was uh, seems to be have been a suicide. Yeah, yeah. And the, the element of like keeping your mental health and us as a society becoming healthier i think that's the, the overall message is we need to wake up and, and mm -hmm. be in touch with ourselves and, and be healthier yeah, yeah. Which, which is kind of a beautiful it's kind of a beautiful social application for the film i think like i i haven't engaged in the dialogue around the film since it came out to be honest i haven't really heard yeah, that no, many other fully. opinions you know but but um without maybe being as informed as i'd like to be my takeaway from it was like in fact, a friend, I, I had a conversation with one friend about it and he was like, I'm not going to spoil anything for you and this won't <clears> be for you, for you either. But he was like, show me a better film about bullying. Wow. I was like, whoa. And he was like, that film sends such a powerful message about how empathic and compassionate we are towards people struggling and towards people with conditions. Um, and rather than the film being so crude as to like, demonize mental health struggles and be like look like mental you know poor mental health leads to you know the creation of a monster and therefore a villain and it 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 wasn't that for me like the character is introduced as someone who and I'm kind of like paraphrasing but wants to spread laughter and joy and shows people kindness and and is and is vulnerable and and opens himself up to spreading that love and joy and also just asking for a bit of compassion in return and doesn't get it and i think that was the that was the point of the film for me that was really powerful it was like it was for me todd phillips the director saying there are people in society who struggle and the outcome of those struggles and the potential for them to get the help that they they kind of deserve is on us as a society do you know what i mean like it, it, that bro. responsibility is on is on us and that 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 was like I found that hard to be mad at, um, mm. and I may have just fundamentally misunderstood. Yeah, the, no, I don't know. I, I film, definitely but... wasn't mad at. Mm. I need to watch what it. was what was shown, mm. but maybe more going on to more like a personal note mm. of mental health. I've seen you speak about how you have the mind application on your oh, phone yeah, yeah, yeah. in an interview. Yeah, I can't and sleep without that thing. That I think I've s seen you speak about anxiety a few times as well. Yes, yeah. Oh, sorry, on calm social up, media. Calm up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just wanted to to find out when did mm. you kind of get more in touch with your the side of taking care of your mental health and your emotions and where you were in the world and, and yeah in, in that process i think it was it was pretty it was pretty late to be honest man and i think that was probably a response to the fact that there just wasn't a dialogue about it and i'm so ashamed to say this and i say this to friends who've like struggled with mental health and i think nearly everyone you know struggles with anxiety or depression to some extent it's just varying degrees do you know what i mean um I, I kind of assume that everyone, you know, and, 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 and there is kind of like nothing wrong with that. You know, you, if you're the least anxious person in the world, but you might suffer a little bit of anxiety, like it's not, it's not a bad thing. And, and, you know, by the same token, if, if you're crippled by it, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's something that can be helped, but it's not something to be, um, sort of, uh, it's not something to attach fault to, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah not to blame and fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guilt trip, fault. Yeah, but yeah. Karen, sorry. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but when I was going through some mental health struggles, I would see people on social media who were kind of ahead of the curve talking about it, and I was like, oh, don't put that on social media. Like, don't keep that. I don't know. Don't keep keep that behind closed doors. Like, that's not for social media. And actually, you could still argue it's not for social media, but. It is so interesting how powerful it has been and how helpful it has been, I think, for people with mental health struggles to see people on social media platforms talk about it openly and people just engage in the discussion publicly just to try and dismantle that stigma because it was that subject that was... Like it was a bit stigmatised, wasn't it? So stigmatised and probably probably still is. It still is, man. Do you know what I mean? 100% percent growing up in a working class home, I'll tell you what, one thing they would say to you is, oh, you're mad, you're mad. And that sort of wow. like attachment to being mad or if you've done something with... Even something that started YouTube, you're mad. What are you doing that for? Mm. And it's like, do you know what I'm coming from, Fuji? I imagine you must have got it as well. Yeah. When you start mm. YouTube, it's just like, you're not well done. Like now it's 
completely changed. It's wow. like, yeah, you're the guy, you're this. When you first started, you're mad, you're mad, you've gone crazy. And it's just like, wow. to a certain extent, I lived up to that, you know, that was almost like the labeling theory. Like people kept saying that. So I felt like I didn't want to disappoint people. I was like, cool, I am mad. And then I think a lot of my behavior earlier on is purely due to the labels given to me by like, I don't think my mum intended to do it, but yeah, she would say it quite a bit. And then it's almost right, like, right. if that's who I am and I'm accepted for you being that person and it's calm, mm. I'm just going to do it. Yeah, fair. Mm. fair. And being maybe aware of the environment and then detaching and then mm. reapproaching and learning to be yourself. I think that might be uh, a journey mm. that happens in life as well. Mm -hmm. Is detaching from everything you've been through to then start again. But no, it's, I don't know, for me, I, I don't know, I get, mental health is such an interesting one, but I think it's, it is a a process that we go through, but it's a, it's a sign and a signal of the times we live in yeah. and our environment. Right. Mm. So I don't really even think it's an individual thing. I do really th see it as more of a collective thing. It's mm. this individual thing, which then spreads the, the, to the collective, but right, right. definitely living in very strange and I'd say unhealthy times, but unhealthy times is also good. Because it allows you to grow and learn. Sure, so I, I, I don't yeah, see learning, yeah. perhaps my anxious states and depressive states as bad anymore. That's, I kind of yeah. view them as their signals to point me into the right direction, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or where I, what I'm, so I'm doing something which isn't perhaps in tune of myself. How can I learn to to see that experience and really feel it, mm -hmm. and then? take it elsewhere and yeah. transform it almost yeah yeah that must be a sign that your mental state is in a it. decent position though the fact that it triggers off a warning like yo bro you kind of need to change this a little bit and you may not know how to change it but the fact that your mind can trigger off and say you need to think a little piece there that is go. kind of lit there like, you go yeah it's a process though I wouldn't say I'm like oh yeah no I'm so healthy yeah, I'm right solved. now oh my wow. god okay. yeah, yeah 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 bliss every day 100% <laughs> yeah. I wake up happy I go to sleep happy I yeah, want yeah. it to be bliss every day yeah that would be great Perhaps. that would be great yeah I think I, it's possible though I mean you, you t the, the sort of utopian idea of just constantly being happy yeah mm. Some sort of bliss. Your food. Some yeah. Version. Thank you. Do I, do I need to do anything? Oh, you do. Wow. This is lit. Get it through the window. That's so funny. This is where I know I've got issues. But I've you said you... Think I'm gonna be happy you said you started your journey quite late. I mean, I don't think I so. Because how, how old are you now? You're 20... Um, I'm 26. 26, yeah. I'm 27. Right. Yeah. Well, it's quite early because yeah. most people never start that journey. Yeah, do you know what? Yo, good Thanks, night. man. Take care, bro. Thank Enjoy you very week. much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it... It's funny, I think I, I think at the point at which the conversation about anxiety and depression became normalized, I'll be honest, like that's when I got fully involved. Uh -huh. I wasn't one of the brave people who was necessarily talking about it before it was in the ether. Do you, know, you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to be honest with myself about that. Um, and I remember seeing, um, I remember seeing um, Matt Haig, who wrote a book called Reasons to Stay Alive, he wrote a book um, called Notes on a Nervous Planet. He's written a couple of other um, fictional books as well. And um, just an amazing writer on mental health and kind of like, he's sort of become the unofficial um, uh, sort of like mental health expert on, on Twitter and social media. Like he's kind of that that, yeah. that guy and, 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 and more importantly, outside of the online world as well. Like in real life, he's that he's that guy. He's going around the world and he's mm. literally changing lives through his writing and, and his um, his sort of uh, rhetoric on, on mental health. And reading one of his books was, was major to me. And, and I think... Um, just generally engaging in more conversations and, and and writing about mental health, it's helped to normalize the the fact of life, which is that like we've all got a brain and you know, um everyone takes care of their physical health and there's virtually no stigma around that. I mean there's intersectional stigma around it, body shaming, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but but people are open to talking about physical health. Mental health, we're just coming on to that. And if you look at it in those terms, it start it starts to feel a bit strange. You know what I mean? Like with phys physical education at school, <clears throat> mm. you know, there's constant dialogue about what's healthy to eat and which way to work out and how to stay fit and da da da. And like we're only just really coming on to like managing your mental. That's just that's just interesting. Yeah. Really it makes sense to else. me though because I think the people that have changed the world is like just regular everyday people we, I think right. we put a lot of power and we put a lot of attention into people that were on television at one point 
And the good thing about YouTube is like, you can make videos in your bedroom and be the man. And then it's almost like, now your voice is important. Whereas beforehand, right, right. Just, if you're on TV, your voice is important. And everyone on TV has great teeth. Yeah. Life's fantastic. Even the homeless man looks like he's doing better than you in a film. Whereas now it's like, nah, bro. Like you can actually upload something right this second, put it online and it's there for the world to see. So and I think that shift has made it a, a bit more of an honest right. world, I guess. So do you feel like, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, but just, just to piggyback off that. So do you feel like the conversation about mental health has has come from the public first and foremost? I think and it's come from of, the people. It's come right, from the people because cool. I think I as people, we, I, th- I use the example in football anyway, I use it quite a bit, is Liverpool. They are <laughs> the greatest. Mm-hmm. Ticket prices went up. They said, scrap all this online stuff, scrap all of that. We are the people. We're going to do something when the game's kicking off. So at match of the day, they have to work, recognise it. So on Twitter, we have to recognise it. Liverpool bust out on a, a particular minute <laughs> and say, what? Your ticket price yeah, like this, yeah. we're busting out. So now the owners and everyone's like, wait a minute, they have the power. We have to listen to them. Yeah. And that's why I love life. I right. it. And I love Liverpool fans. I got so yeah, they're great, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The, the Scouts is they're really, really put in a shift, man. I was that's at true. Red Star Tottenham yesterday. That Jeez. was great. Oh, wow. I was with the Red Star fans. Good for you, <laughs> man. Oh. I mean, they were banned, but they weren't banned. Because you still support the stadium, so you can yeah. be there. They were in like the sec- upper section. <laughs> and uh, everybody bought tickets from, I guess, Spurs fans or whatever in the upper section. Uh-huh. And then for some reason, there was like 20 or 30 of them at one point just got up and started singing. And everybody that was dotted around ran to that section. <laughs> so me and my boys all ran to the section last oh, night. Oh, serious? Did you so see they it? Were yeah. the brave, they were the brave first ones. Yeah, like, no, I mean, they're, the, they're the, probably the ultras. They uh, love oh, them. Oh, right, right. They're the ultras. That's <laughs> they're brave. all like first. people, though. They're, they're all like they're people. The, you know, the ultras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you kind of would join together and congregate and there's 300 of us in the top section of the Spurs stadium right. created our own away end <laughs> and then the, the stewards game blocked it off and we basically had an away end are you serious? yeah, yeah. so that in the end they give you your so basically if you watch the game all you can hear is the Red Star fans oh it mate was great. everyone was saying That's it on Twitter incredible everyone saying they silenced the, all the Spurs fans well could you hear it? I, no no no, no I, didn't, I didn't know because I was um, at the shop in it yeah. so I went on Twitter and said what's going on I was like I'll tell them I'm winning but Twitter wasn't even talking about that they're like, can you even hear they the Spurs just, fans? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? No, it's, for me, that was a big release as well. It was like That's football. Amazing. I'd go and oh, release yeah. and shout and scream. And <clears throat> and uh, my mum at one point, was. she said she saw me at a game once. So I took her to a game and she said, uh, I don't know where that came from. She wow. said, wow, I thought, you, I thought you were mad. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Like, where did that, where's this energy come from? Huh. And it, it, probably because I perhaps maybe... Pen it up and pen pen it up in some way, or yeah, I don't release yeah, it in yeah, other yeah, avenues. Yeah, yeah, and then when I go, go to the grounds, I'd be so vocal and and sing. And now I, I enjoy it. I think more healthily. Mm, whereas before mm, it was mm. I needed to go. Whereas now it's like oh, I'll go and I know I can tap into that and really enjoy it. God, that's but that's a big mad. release for me. I yeah, love it. That is. That is. I love a, it. That's now I realize though. why I don't. Why we I'm lost happy about five nil yesterday. Who did and, and Red Star and we did me and my boy left and we went that was the greatest experience ever that's mad see that's yeah incredible. we were leaving the ground like man how good was that and he was like oh that was the best like we've we've like done a like, chanting and everything for like ever since ever I almost see like I love that, man. That is football cool. like that's ultra it. type ultra type active support is almost like therapy uh-huh. and you can, I always even compare it to church and to maybe even like um, I don't want to get it wrong I might get this wrong like mm. Hindu chanting Church singing, you know, it's a healthy release, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You, you're repeating songs. You're repeating. It's almost like mantras, right. but it's on a f- bit more aggressive. It's, but it's still a release. And there's that element of community. As there well, is the right? community element. There's mm-hmm. the you know you're clapping. There's the energy moving through your body. You're standing the whole time, and at half time you're knackered. You're like, ooh. <laughs> then when you get up again and start singing again, and then there's it's fascinating. One of the most favorite moments of like when you're in such a fan group is when a goal goes in or there's a chance. Because you're already quite hype, that energy, it's almost like a trance. <gasps> yeah, you know, and, and out of nowhere, even if you were knackered, there's a new energy in you now. And you go even madder. And it's just, it's it's seriously some sort, I think it's some sort of uh, out-of-body experience. That's mm-hmm. why I go, I mm-hmm. think, to football. It's a really deep one, but that's, in, if you want to go in and experience it in that way. Mm-hmm. Of course, now, I think modernized football is a bit different where you sit and you watch and you enjoy. And for me, I find that okay in terms of concentrating on the game and watching the game, mm-hmm. but I, it's not the same experience. It's not the same kind of out-of-body potential experience. Sure. And it doesn't have that perhaps addictive 
uh, part to it and the community essence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know seeing what's... seats bought up by sorry, but yeah, like, yeah, right, bought up by corporations and businesses and stuff. Oh, and just football has changed. Oh. That's really that's yeah. that's really upsetting. Man. The football has really the changed. aspect of things has proper brought this luck. What I don't like football is there's almost like a luxurious threshold within football where it's like this is the upper echelon and if you're in the box mm. and if you get the jersey first and if you do all of these things, you're the guy. And it's just like, wow, yeah, well, that's, that's so not what football's it. about. What Vuj just said is actually what football's about. And I think we're all, I think, wow, I owe every footballer an apology. Even you saying that makes me realise half of my life watching football, being stressed, is because I was stressed in life. And then when you go to football, you kind of justify Whoa, taking it out on everyone. Yeah. Like, you're rubbish and this, like everything wow, I said yeah. was because of my own frustration. Probably it's because you're rubbish. Oh, um, we were rubbish. I was a rubbish I person. Like almost, yeah. wow, like if, I'm wow. a rubbish person. You know, like, like you like, didn't play well this week. Yeah. And you're taking it out on them. No, but, the, the yeah. but you maybe haven't playing, well. playing well in life. Yeah, exactly. They right. haven't playing so, well in life. Yeah. That's, that's the wonderful thing about life is that's I've mad. seen in life. That's mad, yeah. I've seen in life is I try to stop to do this now, but like criticism of others is just criticism of self. It's never wow. really you criticizing someone else. Because when you then point that criticism back at yourself you can see that you do the same thing right and then you realize of course critique and criticism some things are off and mm. you can criticize them but in i'd say in many situations you can always point it back to yourself until you get to the stage of no criticism because you realize that everybody's on their own journey so you're not going to criticize got you got you. and then right. in the end you're just at peace because you're aware of mm. others journeys and your own I don't know. I think life yeah, life yeah, yeah. can really take you to different elements of mm. of how you gauge the world. I mm. mean, for me, it's changing every day. So mm, mm, mm. I don't just know. Remaining aware, right? Aware, yeah. self aware, and improving as, yeah, well as a human yeah, being. Yeah. But you know what? I'm but a This is a journey as fuck. I'm gonna get on a footballer soon. Like, give me yeah, a couple no, of yeah, yeah, back yeah, Don't get me wrong. So mad. Next Fair. week in the ground, I'll probably call someone shit, and you yeah. know. <laughs> but it's not in a mad. But perhaps it depends like, on how much that yeah. level of your shit right, you right, mean. Right, 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 right. Perhaps yeah. it's also like context and what do you call it? Intent of how you're saying it. Right, right. Well. Recognizing the root of it. As well. The yeah. root. Yeah. Recognize so the root. That's so if it's passive and it comes and goes, I don't think that's a big deal, really. No, it's mm. like spec. But you know, spec. Deep rooted. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, as in, as in, I know of him. I don't, I, yeah. don't no. know each other, but I know of him. Yeah, yeah. He is the prime example of why, like, he's just amazing. He absolutely he doesn't care. No, so, doesn't. He, <laughs> but the way he gets a footballers, they meet him and love him. Whereas when I take a look at the way I did it, mate, I used to do a review of every single one of the players, and the whole purpose of it was to get an RT. So I would say the most ridiculous oh, thing about football. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's RT. Funny. I didn't care yeah, about the footballer. I'm funny. just upset about something. How do I get an RT to make me feel better? Like, that is poor. No, I see. Uh, yeah, but wow. shit happens, isn't it? I mean, you seek attention in many different ways, I guess. We've, mm, all, been, I don't mm. know, we've all been there maybe in different ways and mm, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Oh, what, was, fully, fully, yeah, man, but... what was your shift like, though, from, I guess, acting in the UK? I mean, we touched a bit on Hollywood and shifting to America and hitting those mm. stages. Mm. how did that affect you internally and what did you find for yourself in yourself to be in these different spaces yeah um it, you know it's, it's a weird one so i guess my first my first ever job that was an american production was um i did the third narnia film which shot in australia so me and my family moved to australia for six months which was like incredible oh, that's mad which was so cool and it was an american production but I don't know assimilating to life in australia for that short period of time a little bit easier than say america mm. just like i don't know there's just culturally it's a little bit less different i guess um uh america i found to be wildly different and when i went over there first time for a job i was on my own and i found it i found it quite tough <clears> like <throat> being the only like english person on set and like they're not talking about the premier league like they're talking about like the NFL or something and I'm just like I don't really know what's going, what's going on, on here, here you know yeah. what I mean like just even little things like that just in conversation I just felt like I had a lot less to contribute and 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 it was quite a it, strangely it was quite a culture shock you know um and that was when I did Weird the Millers and that was like three months um in North Carolina um and yeah that that film was I guess when that film came out, it was more popular than I guess any of us really projected it might it was, be. It was, it was a very funny film. Funny though, man. Yeah, well, thank movie. you. Well, yeah, and I was I was so lucky to be a, a part of it. Um, but yeah, that that definitely changed things a little bit. And then I don't know. I've been really lucky in that I've never necessarily been under that much pressure to live in America. I've been been fortunate enough to stay in London and and 
have this be home and whatnot. Um, and after that, just kind of travelled as and went. But but London's always been home, and I think always will be, um, or at least as far as I can see. Um, and you know, I just I, I I love London. I just haven't really identified with anywhere in in America I've liked as much. Mm. Um, so yeah, and then and then you know earlier I didn't I didn't I don't mean any disrespect towards like Hollywood. I just I just don't I just I don't I don't love LA personally and and. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. You know, so, I've got some wonderful, wonderful friends there, but I just don't. I just don't. I think the American mentality compared to the British is is so different, man. Mm. I don't know if you find mm. that when you go there, it's just a different approach to life. Yeah, you know, a, a thing you spoke about is identity. Mm. I, per- I perhaps feel in America, identity is is enhanced, and perhaps it's the mm. and identity in America is extremely important mm. and very. I don't know. It's on. It's on the forefront because of the whole being an individual. Your right, right identity and perhaps egotistical mm. behavior, etc., is more promoted. Whereas here, do you it's feel like a, in, in, in. Do you feel like are you speaking to LA or just America in I, general? I'd say like, maybe in general. Right, right, but, right. But you know, New York, LA. Mm. Not that it's wrong or bad. Mm, it's just mm. a different perhaps mentality. Mm. I might be completely out of my depth there, but no, no. that's kind of like a personal experience I've seen. And yeah. then here, maybe the European experience is maybe a little less rooted in identity, but right. still has many factors. It's right. changing though, because but it's, it's changing because I can look at the Premier League. So like, even when the Premier League, I remember when I started watching Premier shifting, League, though, the though, biggest yeah. player was Alan Shearer. But Alan Shearer wasn't big because he had a great social account or because he'd done wild outlandish <laughs> things. He was big because he just scored goals. And then if you take a look at that being one of the most important players in the Premier League to now, more time, the, you know, the biggest, especially the younger players coming up, it's all because they have massive social followings and then they're able to even man- manipulate the market and be on more wages. And, wow. and and I feel like through football, everything's becoming more centred around the individual rather right. than the team, which is cool. I think the best example of team for me is Liverpool. Because you wouldn't associate Henderson or Milner with being massive Instagram characters and all of that. But you could take a look at someone like, and this is no disrespect to him, you do your thing, man. Mm. Hudson Adoy hasn't played hardly any games and he's got a 30 million bid from Bayern Munich. And wow. then you've got Sancho and it's like, Sancho's a great player. I'm not taking anything away from these players, but I feel like had they come up at a time when Michael Lowen was hot, Michael Lowen was hot because he went to Argentina, he went, you know, against Argentina, scored a mad goal. And then that's what built his profile. But in the Premier League, he was still doing his thing. Wow, but it wow. wasn't a global situations such as for some of the young players now so I feel like that American mentality of which has always been there Michael Jordan's always been Michael Jordan being a brand and almost the, yeah like they're making brands right. they go out of individuals and that's just making that effort to me that, that whole thing of team like it's not what it used to be for me like well that's coming from someone that's lived in two different eras and experienced it and has a preference and I'm not saying this is bad I'm yeah. just saying I prefer if the top player didn't necessarily have to be the guy has got the biggest social following and all of that I just prefer him to just is whatever he feels like he should be. Whereas right. there's a lot of pressure now to be a brand and a pressure to be a product. And I, this. I think that is more perhaps a, an American Western approach compared to Europe. I don't yeah, know okay. if you agree or disagree. No, no, right. I feel like the Americans are infiltrating this country. That's why I say that. I feel like... I think entertainment in general, though, doesn't it? It has that kind of effect. Culture, maybe American right. culture, and its yeah. effect has always been So huge. dominant in the media. That yeah, I think by oh. now it is being more adopted here. But, I think there's, but there's also positives and negatives Massive to it all. Massive positives. I don't, yeah, I, it's not... I don't want to paint it or... We're not painting it in a negative light. No, no, no. But no, everything no, has sure. a, almost a, a wavy positive and negative. Duality of life has yeah, that kind definitely. of... Yeah, Everything in action has a negative and a positive. Yeah, almost. yeah, for sure. It's also interesting to think about how, like, you know, you travel further east and there's more of an idea about, like, collectivism versus individualism. This yeah, idea that, like, you're that. looking out for you before you look after everybody. <clears throat> it's kind of... It's not necessarily the first instinct that is kind of taught necessarily in more collectivist cultures it's more about like well how do i make sure that the community around me is good first mm. it's quite a lovely way to to look at it and then there's this kind of interesting like happy medium to explore it's like well before you fill everybody else's cup up make sure you've got enough in yours because you're going to exactly. look like an idiot if you go and then you're like oh actually can i get some of that back because i I'm, I'm, my cup's empty do you know <laughs> what i mean? fully can relate to that like that's yeah that's yeah. me though have you been there really yeah i think i think because so, if your instinct is like i need to like you know, impact people positively and, and help people out. If that's your instinct, which is which is freaking lovely, um, you can go ahead and put that into action. But then if you're that person who has totally run out, you almost have to force yourself against instinct to go, well, before I go and help people out, 
let me work on myself and get myself to the point where my cup's overflowing so that I can really put into action what I want to do. Yeah, does that no, make no, does that, that makes perfect sense. sense. Yeah, perfect sense. Yeah. Make your own bed and all that stuff. I've got an alternative Maybe. approach though. So I never treat one situation the same. I'm always like, what are the needs and necessities for this situation and the needs and necessities of people within it? Hmm. So I don't mind filling up everyone's cup because I trust myself to go and get something else. I trust I will go and do oh, something. That's cool. So I'll be like, all right, I don't know if you lot will. Let me give this to you lot. I'll sort myself out. Like, wait, wait, which is not always healthy but to that sounds do. almost external uh, uh, maybe internally possibly yeah I don't know because like, doing so something feels external I don't know when you say I want to go get something it still feels like an external statement it, so how can I say it so it makes me so in my family I was, I'm the oldest brother mm. so I'm used to taking care of my, my brothers right. and my sisters got you. and got you. the reason why is because they can't do the things that I can do so I'll go to the shop for you lot because you lot can't just get up and go to the shop so it's not a problem so mm. now my mentality is if there's something I don't feel you can do let me just do it for you right now. Mm. I'll go and sort it out because it depends on, like I said, it's all different situations. So yes. it depends on the significance and importance. Yes. Yeah. So I'll just be yeah. like, I'll do it for you, man. Not a problem, man. That's, I'll get mm. this job for you. Or how about I hook you up with this? And it doesn't mean anything to me because it means so much to you, but I can do it like that. Do you yeah, know where I'm coming yeah. from? So I, sometimes I don't mind filling up people's cups if it's the right circumstances. 100%. But essentially, I agree. You've got to look after Yeah, and, and I didn't mean to be like, definitely not advocating for like no, no, selfishness or do you know what I mean? Like, you won't, you won't. but just that thing of like being realistic with yourself from a, um, again, from like a mental health perspective as well. It's like, can you, is this sustainable? Can mm -hmm. you do this? Because mm -hmm. it's all well and good doing it for a short period of time. But if you can't do it after that, then you're a burden to yourself and other people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Were you so doing like, anything in your life which you reckon was unsustainable at any point? Um, I think I was, I think I was just not addressing things about myself and working on myself and then going around and being like I'm good and like playing the clown and da 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 yeah, yeah, and like wow. I'm just hopping between roles and all that kind of do you know what I mean and totally. doing that and just giving that out and that was the like that was the you know, when did you realise to go like oh feeling. shit Maybe That's I need to. Scary, bro. Man, 25 like for so me 25 weird. as well really oh! so weird what 25, 26 what did you so do weird. what happened when you not realised like, oh. no. what was it for you alright <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just passed the bomb, but you no, don't have cool. to. There's no rules. He is, There's no rules. He's That's a real cool. actor. Just, yeah. <laughs> I've clucked a couple of times. Man, shift the fucking Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, like, don't oh, worry. I'm I playing. He's got red. Yeah, yeah, I, can go. <laughs> I, can, I can go. I can go. I can go. No, I can do it. No, I get it. Um, I think for me, um, it was it was a lot of like to do, with, I think the, the political time. Mm. of like when Corbyn was doing his thing and I had obviously a certain life experience of my background historically being from ex-Yugoslavia and conflict mm -hmm. and then coming here and having a life which was better than people back home yeah. loads of cultural experiences kind of grateful that I, I felt almost guilty that I was in wow even though I had a, not an easy upbringing here but it was good I had my mum always loved me and looked after my parents mm. I was grateful that I had that upbringing but almost guilty that people back home weren't as perhaps fortunate to be in a position where I was working, filming, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making money, interviewing people, doing what I love almost. Is, and that, then, is that fair to say? It's almost like a survivor's guilt kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I would yeah, say yeah, so. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. seen Kendrick Lamar speak about that. I know yeah, you're a fan yeah, of Kendrick yeah, yeah, Lamar. Yeah, yeah. So I think almost yeah, yeah. there was that there was that element of guilt always undercurrent. Mm -hmm. And then there was always a frustration against the status quo. So I was very against maybe establishment as well yeah. myself. And then I went to university, did, did international relations, da, 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 da. and I felt I was kind of clued up and I had all this like experience and passion and I was like very passionate about it all. And I was like, no, like now is my time, you know, I can finally speak about these things and get it out there. Mm. Mm. And I think I w at that time, Corbyn came along and that felt really like organic and natural mm. to kind of where I saw something. I was, like, I, I was like, oh my God, this is someone in something which is really positive and maybe like isn't the typical political way and... I almost wanted to help everyone as well. So my kind of art because right. like, no, I really want everybody. Ever. No, we can have a really good world. And <laughs> oh my God. And doing that all the time, like looking at like, no, but we can make it good. And oh, we can really improve this. No, we can because we can. Because mm. seeing how it failed before and having gone through kind of an experience of a state failure, mm. even though I was young, but then I grew up and I saw nationalism. I saw what nationalism can do. I saw what hate can do. And I, can, right, I saw right. what the extreme element of hate can do which is conflict and essentially human madness where people kill each other. And then coming here and being like, no, it's happening, but we can like stop the, you know, we're all yeah, the same. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But because it was so focused 
outwardly mm. from my experience and then like publicly getting involved in politics and all these things yeah 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 and then relationships as well like no with girls i was always a maybe a relationship kind of guy so i'd be like no but you are better than that and there and you're always you never point back to yourself mm. you're only just going from your running experience and projecting it right right, right and then at right. one point it was just like a crash it was like boom oh, man. oh fuck wow like what do i know do i am i is this even what i'm saying right mm. like who are the bad people why do i think those are bad are they even bad people wow. and that yeah. duality element of like bad and good mm. and seeing maybe status quo people establishment politicians as bad it started crumbling and i was like Rah, where's this all coming from and mm. then when i saw like fuck it's all these kind of emotions and things that i haven't dealt with i had to kind of go more internally mm. and i just said like the cups were really being filled elsewhere <laughs> yeah. there was so much external focus yeah that there was never a moment for internal self-reflect reflecting yeah 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 and then i did that and i was like oh shit i don't really know as much as i thought i did but that's my kind of personal experience oh yeah and then yeah. it kind of ended up being like oh shit last 25 is when it kind of really went oh fuck <laughs> 25 26 sure 27 sure. now so it's you know it's, it's now it's a process of like old and new changing with each mm, other mm, but mm. more kind of trying to create a new reality rather than being so focused on the external reality because i saw how much it can swing you right like if you're not right. centered it can just swing you into the the currents of media entertainment life and that was happening whilst the whole time you're doing all of this online content yeah, yeah, yeah. right 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 so and this is mad and, bro and the, the pervasive idea mad. around you is that he's good he's like happy and always funny and cool and yeah i think comedy was always the way like ah it's funny and i used to view things very funny etc and then it changed and it got very serious and then now i'm like kind of back to viewing it mm. as f- not as funny but i'm like this is all just shit happening. Right, 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 right. So I don't know, bro. I think it's a process. I went on a rant there. No, no, that was, that was lit. That was kind of, that was no, lit. That no, was no, lit. No, that makes but then it ended up being almost like nihilism. Right. Like what nihilism is, is like, I only learned that word recently as well. I'm, I don't know it fully, but it's no. like, everything is pointless. Oh, okay. It, oh, oh, it gets oh, you to, to that. Right, you're like, right. everything's fucking pointless. Right, right, Like, right. I'm just like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then that one is a tough one to get out of. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> When you're in nihilism stage, you're like, all right, this is mad fun. That is... Everything is, you kind of, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because of maybe the extent of very intense experiences. And exploring so many different things. And exploring so many things. It's like, wow. right, shit. Hey, podcast so cannibal, it, was I there? Yeah. Was I there on one, a half cast at one point when I used to come in and just do nothing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and you're like, right, this is fucking good, like, pointless, bro. Yeah, when you were coming in and it was just like... I wasn't interested in nothing, in it. I wasn't interested in absolutely yeah. anything I was doing. It was wow, terrible. Man. I've been, yeah, I've, I've wow. been there. Because I, well, I worked at a company called Copper 90 as well, and that wasn't really mm. fulfilling me either. Even though I came up with some really sick concepts and I was doing really well, I was like, fuck, I'm fucking not liking this either now. And then you're like, oh, shit. And then wow. you're like, oh, people around me, oh, I don't really, I'm not really enjoying the, these. You kind of become very self, I don't know if it's absorbed or aware. There's mm. a mix of both. Mm. And you're like, damn, I need to kind of see what's going on here before yeah. I ask Will you know, can I ask you one question Martin. how difficult was it to deal with that because I, you know I've always seen you as a, a very great creative like you're incredible how difficult is it to deal with that knowing that you don't see the point in everything but everyone's like bro you're lit but you're just like mm. how hard is that to deal with that must be difficult I don't know bruv to be fair no I think it's just kind of like just leave me alone bruv isn't it like I'm just trying to I need to find where my feet are right now. But you don't even know how to say that because you're always in that process. Mm. But that was kind of, I had to detach from everything that was happening. Mad, bruv. That's, that was my kind of thing was, it was yeah, as you said, like the cup. I had so many cups that I was like throwing everywhere else. Yeah. But you've got to take all that advice for yourself. And, you know, Man. all the advice I was giving out, Weren't as it amazing yourself. as it is, and did come from perhaps experience. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think at one point it stopped being from experience. And then people started expecting me to just know and talk about things. And then I didn't really know what to say. And I started forcing it. Right. So even though I had an education and political background, at one point it kind of started becoming a bit like a persona. Where it's like, no, people expect me. People's entry point to you is going to be that topic. So yeah, yeah. And a lot of people it was, it was like, oh, this guy knows. I don't know. I remember one time I did like an interview when it was Grenfell. And Sky wanted to interview me. And I was like, fuck it. Go on then. Let's chat. 
That'd be and they put the cameras on me. It was live. Like, so what do we did? Like, what are you? I said, I don't know, bruv. Like, I'm just here to speak what I think is mm. from my mm. what I think is true. Mm-hmm. No, but what you know? What do we describe you as in the description? I'm like. I don't know, YouTuber, whatever you want. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Like, right. the, the identity you? thing when you were like, I don't know how to identify. Yeah. Like yeah. Hollywood. I'm not like, I don't right. know. No, you know? Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. know how yeah. to. And then when it came out, it said activist. Oh. oh. And I was like, oh. I'm not. I, right, right, I, right. I just saw Sky filling up activist. And then some people, I think maybe even thought I was an activist or something. And I was like, bro. And then I on don't. social media being like, you're not an activist. No, but I'm not. Right, I'm right, never, right, right, I would never right. say I'm and an you activist. you never claim to be. But you never wanted to be. Like, it's not what you said I don't to want to, No, no, I know. But I think it's interesting when you put yourself in different spheres in the world, mm-hmm. you get labeled with maybe different. I don't know. That's whatever so people label you as, are you a YouTuber? Are you a this? For me, it's always been weird to say. Man can't be a plain a T-shirt. Man <laughs> cannot just be a plain T-shirt or figure out a label later. I know. Like, I guess this la- is- you need labels, but I think maybe there's an element when like it becomes a bit pointless. For right, me, anyway, right, from my right. experience, I think labels are a bit pointless. Yeah, but I get it. Know, for functioning, you need a lot them. Of times, yeah, yeah. You should have said firefighter. Really that would have confused the no, issue. No, no, but it wasn't because that if I moment. If activist, they're going to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, if you're a firefighter yeah. getting this information or like, I don't it's know. It's like that time. Really, but that, that is lit. But that like, time really. wasn't like a humorous time. I no, just, yeah, of course. It course. almost felt like it triggered everything personally that I maybe have experienced in my life. Injustice, etc. And you kind of see it happen again and that was a very emotional time mm. I think the whole Grenfell experience really hit me deeply yeah it just triggered many things I think from growing up and that was tough to process and do you know when- what I found difficult about Grenfell how surprised everyone was that's when I just I, did, I proper didn't want much to do with it because bro mm. there was fires in Tottenham there was problems in th- obviously not to that extent but in terms of neglect We've already seen the journey. So yeah. by the time it's got there and everyone's so surprised, that's not just Justin, was... you were surprised, by the way, but like just the general public was like, what did you not expect? Like, did you see what was going but on? But I think that's every... why the, the, so many people were hurt and I, I, I felt the hurt and many people did feel the hurt is because mm. we've been aware of the neglect. <sighs> time. Right. right yes, right, mass right, media right, was right, surprised right. and then they're like, oh, oh my God, how did this happen? Mm. But many people that have experienced the neglect and been through the system, mm. you felt it. So when it, when it crescendos in the death of so many people, innocent mm. people, that you can relate to on a daily basis, <laughs> it's gonna it really hurts. trigger an uproar. And it's you know, right there. Really and it's, it's right, right there. It's an it, um, fact of the tragedy that happened in it's people. And, and, and also like in a kind of, like an, an area that is also defined and characterized by, by a lot of like wealthy and privileged people. And they're having to it's now wild. face yeah. The, the ugly truth of it just just for in a visual sense like it's there you know mm. what I mean like it's interesting because um, thinking about uh, the election of Trump in America right yeah 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 I hate to like use use his name even on this platform but no go but, for it um, but, no, we're, we're, we don't judge here but, uh, mm. but, but like the election of Trump it's like I think for a lot of like people look like me like a lot of like middle class white liberals were like this is outright this is appalling how could this happen and for I think I assume and without speaking for anyone I think for a lot of the communities that are actually you know affected and have been have been being affected by um, the sort of rhetoric that Trump kind of promotes we're like yeah we're not shocked yeah 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 do you know what I mean like we knew that there were people in this country who were going to vote in that direction Mm. you know we've been feeling the effects of the sort of things that Mm. he implements and will continue to implement it was it was the people who were protected by their own by their own privilege do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Do you know no, what? i agree with you. I, agree with you, yeah. I totally understand because i was thinking about what i was saying to vuj and how it may have sounded and i just want to make sure you get clarification mm. growing up i felt like i was in a war so if someone died that's what happens in war so wow. i've never ever ever looked at negative things as that negative Whereas, but then when, as an older, bigger man now, I can tell you all the things you've done as a youngster was absolutely ludicrous. Mm. But if you have changed your perspective, like my perspective, this is war. All the things that happened made perfect sense. Like I'm talking about being, like, for example, in our estate, we always complained about the railings on the river for the simple fact that you've got a very deep um, uh, river, you've got a river and people can die if they fall inside there because the current wraps around your leg. Mm. And those young boys dying and it was like, no one cared. So by the time that one of the stories broke the news, it was a common, like as a young child, like, I, I, it's, not that, it's not that we didn't care, it was that we were like, but this is what happens here, bro. Like, why are you so surprised by this one? Like, this has happened like how many times beforehand? Right. Do you know? And right. I'm actually even upset 
that I lived in a condition where that was normality to everyone. That was sad, fam, that, that I used to even think like that and everyone thought like that because mm. that's why when it gets to this point, I'm a lot, I'm a lot older than um, both of you, bro. Like the type of a mental, at, like, the type of attitude and perspective you have towards a really, really negative situation is like, I'm exhausted by this now. Wow, and wow, and wow. the harsh reality about it, being like where I am is, you know, essentially there isn't going to be much change. And that's why I begin to hate and resent social media because I'm like, bro, all you're going to do is change your screen to something on Instagram and all of these but, things and the actual issue, there's an awareness about it. I'm fully aware of it. But being in a situation for someone, it's just like, I don't know. I just, you look, seem irritated. No, no, no. Freaking yeah, I was just like, yeah, I just, I'm really broken hearted by those things. Like yeah, to the point where you're fine. not even angry, you're just disappointed and you're just like, wow, why would I even speak when I know nothing's going to change? Yeah. I could do everything I want nothing's going to change. And yeah. then you get the mentality that the older Caribbeans have and all of that is you work, 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 you build up your home and then you get out. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't even... That's for a lot of, I think, immigrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to think, right, I don't even right, want to think like that. Do you know what I mean? I right. kind of want to just be here, be comfortable. And But so when I see all of these bad things happening in London, in England, I'm like, bro, this is the reasons why I'm... Go-. It's almost like it's a reassurance. Like, I told you, I'm out. I told you that I'm out. Do you know mm, what I mean? Mm. And I personified that a lot on Half Cast Podcast. Um, when I kept saying I'm going back to just because of how these things to me it's just like bro like no one's going to do anything about it this is a social trend yeah well, and I yeah, just don't yeah. like the fact that loads of struggles are social trends it proper breaks my I, heart bro and and that's where I think social media isn't the kind of um, progressive tool of communication it's marketed to us as I think mm. sometimes it has us kind of taking real that. world issues yeah, and having them trend on the timeline for a while before they get shelved again uh, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know what I mean and that's no like secret but that that is yeah. that is that is disappointing no um, I get it and and actual and then, and then actually people seeking to achieve progress and people doing things in the interest of moving things forward making things more more equal more fair being torn down by people who aren't qualified to do the tearing down yeah, yeah. you've got it like you've got people who you know, have 12 followers, but they have a PhD in the subject that they're commenting on and they're just getting trounced by someone who has 10,000 times more followers a, because they've got the blue tips. It's just I, It's not I, fair. I feel like, fair. I don't know if you feel that as well. Social media has, I mean, I think it just highlights our insanity, really. It's always been there, but now it's almost like a, you know, you have the, yeah, what yeah, do you call yeah, it? Yeah, the yeah, magnifying yeah. glass. Mag- magnifying glass yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, social media is like, you put a magnifying glass on and like you see everything also positive. Yeah. But the negative, perhaps, because negative is our brains are maybe more wired to lean that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why social media sure. becomes a breeding ground of this conflict and toxicity. And mm-hmm. I don't know how you find the experience of social media. You don't follow anyone on Instagram, so you don't get to see it, which is lit. It, it, well, yeah, and it's it's funny, man. I, I was on I was on Twitter for a while. <clears throat> I think I I can relate and empathize with your experience of feeling like I needed to like. Being oh. honest, because obviously, like different different growing up experiences in, in, yeah, entirely, yeah. and um, but but that thing of just like right, I have this platform. Let me use it positively. Gotcha. Let me engage politically. Let me engage on this level. Let me try and use my voice. Da, 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 da. And like, I still feel an element of responsibility to use my voice in a in a in a um, a kind of where where I can. Uh, and so long as I'm not taking up space or or speaking on things I'm not qualified for, still use my my platform. Uh, as kind of responsibly as I should. Mm. And then I found myself on Twitter saying what I wanted to say and then engaging in like dialogue that I didn't need to be engaging in that wasn't actually, you know, moving things forward for anyone. Um, yeah, 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 I get you. I think I, de- I fully agree with that. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've definitely been there where I've tried to speak on things I'm not qualified on. I think speaking for others' experiences, as much as you feel you, my experience maybe relates to others, you can never really speak for someone else's experience, which I think I've been guilty of 100%. And then you realize that, damn, you need to stop. For me, it was like, oh shit, this isn't the real world. And even like, you know, I had an interaction with Katie Hopkins once and then... <laughs> yeah. No, I remember like back then, my how my mind shifted as well is, I don't know, she'd say something or someone like, I don't know, Robinson to Robinson, or someone would say something and then you'd mm. respond with like the right right way to view yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get all this- Challenger bully. Yeah, and then you get the kind of, I don't know, attention or the re- re- reaction and you're like, yeah. But then you're like, you're just in a bubble. 
Have you really challenged it though? Right. Like, have you right. just done it for right. your? Have you, has your own ego just been ticked and now you feel better? Like, oh yeah, hmm. I, I did my bit. Five hundred retweets and I showed uh, Katie Hopkins that. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where is the element of when are you really doing it out of truth and when are you doing wow. it for maybe so attention? You know, especially when you realize that potentially they they live off. People and they like live yourself, off, and they live off the attention. I had the same thing with Piers Morgan. Like, I he blocked said something it to me a I while said, back. The only oh, good thing you? about him is he's an Arsenal fan. But that's the only good thing. But like you know, I, I I had some thing with him, and I came away from it, and I was like, "What have I just done? Why did I just do that? How did you feel after you had that interaction? Initially, like showed him, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, afterwards, afterwards, I was like, ah, "I'm an idiot for even engaging with someone like that on this platform. Hey, Why did I? Do you know what I mean?" But I like, fully agree. Times, fully, so, have you now? Uh, do you use social media less now, or would you say you're on it less involved? Are you so, addicted? Are you not addicted? Yeah. What's your screen time like? Yeah. So, so uh, a couple. Of, <laughs> oh God, yeah. A couple. Of, for that. There is. Yeah. Uh, a couple of. I want to say like last year at some point, or beginning of this year, I wrote a statement just, just defining kind of um and and again like I, I really didn't think like anyone would care all that much but without um disrespecting any of the support that i got on social media and the people who've like shown me love and everything like that i just said no disrespect i'm taking a step back just because i've spotted that um the balance is off you know with regards to like where this is positive for me and everyone else and where it's actually negative and feel like I'm running in circles a little bit. So I'm going to take a step away from Twitter. Um, not a permanent one. And I kind of, in so many words, said like, I'm not quitting. I'm just um, redefining my usage of, of social media so that I'm streamlining it. And it's going to be um, for the purpose of drawing attention to organizations and charities that I might work with. Outside of that, um, I'm not really going to be using it like all the best. And like BBC got hold of it and said, Will Polter quits Twitter. And I was like, <laughs> the BBC and I was like first of all I was I think I, I, I was like first of all I was like why why did the, why does anyone care why why did the BBC care and also where did you get the word quit from because that's mad with the media right and that's and that that just affirmed the decision I made I was like right there you can't put something up clear in black and white on there just type it up and not have it spun even by the BBC who are this that, impartial you know but I think that, that's the tricky coverage. thing of maybe with social media now as well is the BBC is meant to be impartial mm. so far and I don't know you st- uh, for me since I've taken taken more maybe a step back of being so involved you kind of start observing it more for its madness dude 100% and then I saw that the other day where I was just kind of looking at news articles and and you see I, I even searched something uh, and then it just came up with accounts repeating the same thing and then you're like, so are we, is this, this just some sort of brainwashing going on? Like, what is going on? Are we even, how in control are we of how we feel? Mm-hmm. It's like, crazy. you can't let, we, we can't, I mean, for me, not anymore, I hope. Mm. Right? These headlines are just bombarding you all the time for you to be triggered and yeah, be yeah, in this yeah. element of a tornado almost, internal tornado where you're, I think that's where the power lies in going within yourself mm-hmm. I think for me it ended up being now I think the whole of life is a spiritual journey mm. until you kind of realised I don't really like the word spiritual because it's I used in know. all different ways but I do think life ends up being that and when you've tried all other avenues like reconnecting with your spirit and being more in tune of your thoughts feelings emotions whatever that might be self-awareness again, self-awareness yeah. Yeah. ends up being the most important man 100 percent. I, I, I didn't get i didn't i felt like I, my self-awareness was under threat while i was in that oh man tornado was gone but i thought yeah. thing is at that point i thought i was self-aware yes and that's the mad thing about that yeah because the currency on that on those platforms is the likes and the retweets attention and so it's like as long as people are retweeting this and there aren't too many negative comments i must be doing the right thing and it's like but again it's not necessarily being translated into real life like yeah. i i could i could you know tweet about something and actually I'd have to honestly ask myself well have I actually put that into action in real life mm. I'd have to and by the way some people manage the balance and, and more power to you oh, wait, you respect. go on social media oh, and yeah, you yeah, can yeah. you can live what you tweet I literally respect the hell oh, out of you for it I just personally hands up I could 100% I just personally couldn't manage it do you know that's what I mean? mad now now yeah. I understand something do, do you know what I mean because, yeah no fully fully I'm not, I'm not, I'm man not dissing know. anyone who's no, on like, social no, media full, whatsoever you know, like, people like Loki like uh, I know Loki Akala uh, and Akala I know they put I know because 
that's yeah, yeah, two obviously. people yeah, two yeah, people yeah. that I'm like no but, no, you know what I mean? no but those are two people where I go well look whether you agree or disagree with them uh, such characters mm-hmm. at least you know what they're speaking about it's being enacted you know that that what they've learned the knowledge they've acquired it's really being put to, to test yeah. in different work parts of the world and you go okay mm-hmm. you might not agree or you might not have the best opinion or whatever opinion you do have but you have to I don't know for me it's like I respect it I have to respect it I really respect it I have to respect it I know you're and then I realise and low key half of the things I'm saying I'm not even you know how real is that how real am I being right because you had to you had to say it to me one time one time there was something I was doing and Vu just kept saying but why and I'll give another reason but why and then by the time I've given 965 (laughs) reasons you realise they were all excuses there was no reason you were just doing it because of whatever insecurity you had so then even like as of recent I said, I don't talk about racism no more. Mm. And when Rouge came through the door, he was like, oh, I like that. And I was like, I think I've only done that because of you, you know, because I know it's not the right thing to do, but I can't figure it out. Then hearing you lot talk, you're just like, I'm so glad I'm not going to talk about it no more, you know, mm. because I'm just putting all of this stuff into the world. I'm only going to go back to trying to sort this out and sort that out. And that issue is still going to be there. And I don't really have the time management to tackle it. So why am I even speaking about it? Like it's happening. I'm sure somebody's going to do a good enough job about it. I'm not the spokesperson for it, nor do I want to be the spokesperson for it. Let it just happen. Because at one point, I'm like, get John Barnes on the top. I don't want to talk to them guys. They're exhausting, you know? <laughs> it's actually, ex- after yeah. you've actually tackled it and dealt with it, you're so tired, you can't even go there for like four or five days. But there's somebody that, they're dedicated to this, you know? Like, they're going to tackle it and right. they're going to see the issue online. They're going to go pick up the phone. They're going to do something to prevent it. And I kind of agree with you. Like, I need to respect the fact that that's not me. So I'm just going to just allow it, fam. And it's not that I don't care about it. Of course. No. I listen I care about it too much but it angers me so much I just don't have the ability to do something to put it into practice to prevent it on I can build awareness but then but how if, important if, is awareness if, all the time like? but perhaps how we live our life and how we interact with our environments is the action okay fair but, enough then. Yeah, maybe so yeah. then and, and you know, it doesn't like, mean doesn't, you can't then go and do that offline and I, yeah. I hate that because it gives online the power and like offline exactly, like it's secondary yeah, yeah. but in the real world do you know what I mean yeah, but if you're mean, treating you people change that with way. love and respect and you're oh, still challenging that. things on a day to day basis right, right. Yeah. you're still doing it you're just maybe not being advocated for it you're not given the plaudits for it you're not but on a day to day basis you're spreading love and you're I prefer and, that you know you're still challenging yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, you yeah. still are it's just maybe you're not getting the likes and retweets for it it's just you know it's like, you know the energy you get right. from but online like, when you talk about stuff like that I don't know it is horrible <laughs> when, when you when you t- when, when you, you put- go online and give that energy even if you're talking about it in a positive manner sometimes just the response it's, is horrible bro I don't know what to say though that, that's mad that's part of the I think, I think that's part of the thing is recognising that also you're engaging in a conversation with people you don't know and while there is Obviously, there's a, there's no doubt that people have been able to use social media in order to affect positive change and educate people and inform. And I think Akal is a great example of that. Fantastic. You know, I think Matt Haig is another example of that. Sean King, like there's 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 Some great examples. Yeah. You know, thousands of people literally. But again, it was just like a personal thing. It was like for me personally, I'm yet to, I'm yet to sort of have my cup full and be able to mm. sort of. To, to be able to fill so up you're other filling cups your on cup this platform, now, would you say? I don't know what needs to be in the cup yet. Like, do you know what oh, I mean? Okay, like, cool. I just I need to go away and and I would love to be able to come back and and kind of finesse my use of social media in a, in a beneficial way. I'm also aware of the fact that like you know, um, being white, male, middle class, you know, privileged upbringing, etc. Like, I'm not the guy to speak on a lot of those things. You know, I think to the point you were making, it's like I, I'm not the guy to talk about yeah. a lot of those things, and also coming from me rightly so a lot of times it's like well what the fuck do you know about I respect anyway, that, so I, I respect that so much you know, on the bro, flip you side know? you might be with Extinction Rebellion right now doing your thing say again <laughs> <laughs> but here's but trying he, to go one little for Canada <laughs> do you know do you know what but here, here, here's here's the other thing I'm also on social media yeah my my, my earliest interactions with um, <laughs> talk to me. my my earliest interactions on social media was 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 mostly as a as a as a music fan yeah and, a, yeah. and, a, and a music of black origin so also the other thing I had to ask myself is like okay so I'm gonna jump on this platform and I'm gonna yeah okay I'm gonna like retweet you know a grime video or I'm gonna um you know uh, follow um uh, you know my favorite uh, hip hop UK rap artist on Twitter, etc., etc. And I'm going to benefit from music of Black Origin, but then I'm going to stay quiet when you know there are issues that disproportionately affect the Black community. That doesn't feel fit, like a fair 
Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That but then, you know, it is one thing you always have to remember is <laughs> bare black people stay quiet as well. So don't even feel well, obligated to take that pressure. It's like, no, no. It's there for, one thing I like about music, it's there for everyone's enjoyment. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. if you're purchasing the music, that means that you're financially contributing to somebody's life who was sure. from a working class area who sure. couldn't get out of it and you're helping them get out. Sure, like, sure. for anyone to put any more pressure on you than that is like, that's their own personal problem, man. I'm sure you're streaming it and spreading awareness about that artist. And right, right, Booz right. just said he knows you're a Kendrick Lamar fan. Like, we're both Kendrick Lamar fans, and I'm sure Kendrick Lamar will be very, not because of who we are, just because we're people that admire him. That's mm, enough of people mm, like that, mm, do you know mm, what I mean? No, so, it fully, people fully. of respect as well, I think. You know. Bro, that's true, Entitlement man. Entitlement can be a motherfucker, though, definitely. I feel like if people maybe feel entitled and... I don't know. Mm. I, 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 I can't remember. It's so weird how, like, how mad, I guess, the social media journey has been where now I guess it's predominantly seen as toxic by most people, I'd say. Many. Uh, many people I've mm. noticed have stepped off it. Yeah. Of course, it's still circulating. And but it's because we got older, though. So then, like, if we were younger, we all would have been on it. Yeah, true. It's screwed up, well, man. It's that magnifying glass. But what happened to you at 25? We didn't get to Yes, that. we didn't. Ah! Oh, by the way, <laughs> and also, without without also trying to appear to, like, dodge that one again, I just completely forgot about my wings, but I got too self-conscious eating Don't worry, bro. We're good. And I knew I, I was going to regret it. As well. Don't so, worry. I'm, gonna, I'm taking that home with me. Um, thank you. Um... What happened to me in 25? Well, you know what? Funny enough, listening to... Say, how many wings did you get? Uh, Don't say three. No, six. A few. Yeah, 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 no, thank you. Yeah. I said to them six and they just brought one box. I said, what? Oh, no, no, no. I'm mad Thank you, no, I got six. Um, uh, yeah, no, hearing about your experience, I think mine maybe started a little bit, a little bit before I was 25, actually. 25 was when I kind of really worked on myself. I had like a sort of year kind of pretty much off work where I was able to to do that which was really positive mm-hmm. um, I'd kind of gone back to back to back on projects and then I was like let me take at least a little bit of time out and that intersected kind of conveniently with just like not being able to get a job <laughs> and then I was like okay I've got a year now where I'm just kind of working on me and and it was it was cool actually I really I was really grateful for it um very lucky to have that opportunity but I think my um my kind of yeah my shift just in terms of like thinking and whatnot with regards to what I do and 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 then also I think how much of my enjoyment and my purpose was just coming from work came after I shot Detroit which I played a um, I watched that oh right oh, cool. yeah, thanks yeah. for watching it man I played a um like a racist police officer and 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 with that came a massive education um and I got a lot of guidance and received a lot of information from um a lot of people who who really woke me up to things about my identity, you know, because um, I think that was kind of the subject of what we were talking about, yeah, like yeah, those identity, identity shifts yeah. and and making me aware of my my privilege, kind of sort of, I don't want to say for the first time, but certainly in ways I hadn't learned before. And then this idea of like unearned privilege and undeserved prejudice, you know, um, that kind of um, the 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 ways in which like my experience has been shaped by privilege and and then learning about just how different other people's experiences have been through this film and I came out the other side of that and I was like wow I need to drill down on that a little bit more and and I think that made me um want to explore it um you know and uh I think also look at future projects as an opportunity to affect social change where possible you know what I mean again not forcing it but like you know this film was about a real life event took place in um, 1967 um, Detroit Rebellion where um, basically three innocent African American men were killed by the police two women were um, sexually assaulted um, during one night in in the context of these protests and um, they walked away scot-free and and the kind of I think the thing that the film was trying to underscore was the fact that the same thing is repeatedly happening um, in communities across the across the globe, um, and it's you know particularly um, heightened in America. And through that, you know, we didn't win all the awards we wanted to win. We didn't make you know the film didn't make a load of money, but like they've considered making the film required viewing for new recruits going into the police force and like getting to meet. Are you serious? And like, do you know what I mean? And like getting to go and meet the chief of police in Detroit, who's an African American man who now heads up the most diverse police force with the highest uh, number of people of color and women in America. That was sick. I was like- Rude boy. Do you know what I mean? That that's was like, amazing. Now that's, that's to me is what's important. Like even if no one ever knew that, but that's happened, that's effect. That's like, even if it's never made social media, like that's helping people mm. in real life. And I think that's what I care about more. 
Like, I care about that so much more than, like, thinking, oh, man can tweet something and, ah, bro, like, man needs yeah. to be out there, like, proper out there. Like, when I used to do youth work, Vuj, I was there, bro. No, no, no. Like, no, I was yeah. really there. Right, I was right, so right. disappointed of the way my life, like, my, where my life has gone. That's why, like, every day, if it's not Woodgreen or Tottenham, I have to walk around for, like, half an hour and to an hour and just be around what it is not you, not be the consumer on the net and who's just like mm. spectating about it so when I hear things like that because I'm always going to you know underprivileged areas now because that's where I was raised mm, mm. I know the effects of that in wow. my community I can only imagine Detroit some of the things I've read about Detroit is mental so if that's what's happening over there now right due to some of your work that's incredible bro and like and and you know, I was, I just, yeah, I felt, That's I cool. felt very grateful to be associated with a project like that. That's but, cool. but also again, you know, very ignorant to the experiences of people from, from the, the areas that the film focused on and, 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 you know, the experience of the people like living in, in Detroit. Um, so yeah, massive need to educate myself and inform myself. And off the back of that, I was like, wow, I know so little about the world. I thought I kind of had it like roughly figured out and I was yeah. like, I am so far from, and still, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, get you. I think it's always still a, so a learning process. Right. You're never like, oh, I'm here now. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Oh, yeah. I know it all. But that, but that set, I think that set me on the path of wanting to um, Sick, educate myself and uh, in that respect. And then also look for those projects that, um, that, you know, seek to do the same thing. I, I'm a big fan of going to the movies for the purpose of escapism and just watching Sunning and just getting away from the stress of life. But, those movies that make you think about how you could potentially impact the immediate world around you, you know what I mean? Mm. Or, or the space around you, however small or big, like that, that's the real power of film and television and media for me, I think, you know, like the idea that like through this conversation, someone could have just heard the an an anecdote you just shared and they're like, I'm going to do that now. That's sick. Like that's yeah. sounds dope. Yeah, for real. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, you know, hearing about your story and, yeah. and you know, that's... It's, you are exchanging us all the time. It's mm. quite beautiful. I mean, it's good that we're doing it in this kind of context as well. Yeah. In a prolonged conversation, actually yeah. get to know each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe that's why podcasts are becoming so popular. Maybe because people are so bored of the instant right, drip right, feeding right. of, you know, attention going everywhere. And, yeah. and now you can actually sit down and listen to a conversation. Right. That's what we used to do before, right? We'd get together in a living room, the common space, we'd and talk, talk for hours. Where I'm from anyway, that's what you what you do is that's what the man did you chill the in front of your block or your house and you just have a little drink <laughs> and then, you know, wow, wow, yeah, whatever, yeah, play yeah. football. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe, I don't know how it is for the kids these days. I'm not, you know, at school or et cetera, but mm. it does seem like there's a lot of attention being just driven into bite-sized moments and so true. that are so the society is changing and our minds are being programmed differently i'm oh, still yeah. battling it every day my phone you know when you pick Man, it up and you're just scrolling and you as well oh my god like the time the, the oh, times i'll put on a film that. and then i'll just pick up yeah yeah, yeah do you know what i mean you know, my phone you know like distracting no, but the other day bro like i found my hand just going <laughs> and i went <laughs> where are you going <laughs> Bav, i caught it <laughs> I caught it. I said, wait a minute. That Who do you think you are? So what time? Do you know what Vuj used to do that was so funny? When he went to go to college, he'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's true. It is like... No, it is, you know, you're like, mad. wow. Your thumb has just unlocked it and suddenly you're on an app and you're like, what the it hell? Is mad, How did, it's mad, It's a crazy. bit mad, isn't it? It is. It's really Regaining scary. that self-control, I think, is, is, mm. is essential. I'm trying. I'm definitely not there yet, bro. Seeing kids interact with it as well is, mad. is, is crazy. When like a one-year-old is just like... Nah, bruv. But I always say Steve Jobs never let his kids have iPads or iPhones. Yeah, he did. And that really to me gives Steve it Wallops all away. Says yes. it. Oh. The man said, "You're not having this piece of shit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know our brains are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, "You're not having it." Because you know I know how mad yeah. that is. He's the inventor That's of crazy. it. That's, That's like us saying. You see this podcast? We're not releasing it. Do you know why he's not mad though? Because it's not mad. He's intelligent. He knows what he's yeah. doing. Bro. And it's not even that. He's a lot older. So imagine living in a world yeah. without it. I've lived in a world without it because I'm always there. Yep. So where I've lived in a world of all, where it's not there, mm. and I see the benefits. Obviously, there's, mm. there's benefits, benefits to it now. Of course, but benefits. one beneficial factor about not having social media is means I have to talk to you. If I say to you I want to meet you at seven o'clock in the cinema, I've got to be there at five to seven. Because mm. who's yeah, going to wait yeah, around yeah, twenty yeah, minutes yeah, when you can't yeah, phone yeah. someone? You kind of so it's like you have more of a responsibility to really like watch how you're operating whereas now cause you know man, man can be late man can start sending my whatsapp location live feed yeah. and be like oh I'm gonna be a little bit late but at least you know where I am like see that's any more right. acceptable like right. I'm trash and, man and like, where absolutely. no but where where technology's been 
positive for us and it's increased social mobility and the way we're able to communicate da, da, da. Mm. it's crazy how we've turned it on ourselves where to the extent that like now it's like oh well, we can like not necessarily like you know feel an onus to be there for our friend at that time because we can do that we can just lean on technology or whatever. exactly like, oh, you know that's God. crazy I but then do well done you what you sorry to cut you no, what I you said is bro. lit though it's like it is good that there are more podcasts you know because i love Funny. when i see a new podcast i'm like well done man because you lot have to meet up yeah. you have to talk about it and even through the conversation if you're making a mistake through the conversation you're kind of gonna yeah. like sometimes yeah. i was just sitting back watching you two like right like, that's just true because and I'm just piecing it together in my head, do you know what I mean? Which I think mm. is incredible. Mm. So shout out everyone's yeah. podcast, man. Absolutely. The thing that's great about us as humans is that when things do go that way, they will eventually go this way. Yeah. And as much as it does go that way, it will eventually go that way until maybe, I don't know what the answer is. But I, I, That's I, the saddest thing. <laughs> I watch a bit of Russell Brand. I'm not saying he's the man, but uh, just going from maybe my own personal journey, mm, mm, mm. I think going within is like so powerful. I'm not yeah. saying it's an easy journey and like, oh, I've gone within now. What an amazing place. Mm, mm, mm. But like meditation, yeah, detaching yourself and facing your thoughts and fears. and Because mm. I do want to get into acting one day. I can't be asked yet, but you know, no, when, it, when it does happen. <laughs> do you know what you said registered two seconds after you said? I was like, wait, wait. Because I like the first one. I'll get into I was it. Like, like, can't be asked. I'm like, <laughs> no, but I love the honesty. <laughs> I respect the honesty. I respect yeah, yeah, the honesty. It's maybe freshly. I mean, I, I basically do it already online. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I was like, wait, videos. but you kind of have. <laughs> I was like, you kind of are, bro. But I mean, like, in terms of like going No, it, no. I hear, is, I, hear is, I, I feel like maybe the best actors are the ones who have really gone through the personal journey. Right, right, yeah. To be able to tap into the different characters and moments, experiences, emotions. Because how do you yeah. read a script and tap in? Right, if, you know the deeper characters. If you haven't been there, right, right, right. I can do right. comedy any day. That's not a problem. But you know, what I mean, if you want to, yeah, but that's it's interesting. Amazing... I don't know, that's how I view it. It might be completely no, a personal yeah, journey. I can't but... do acting. It's just hitting me now. Oh, I'm looking forward to one <laughs> I've day. I've always, do you know, what? I serious. Said, Annie shares when I was young. <laughs> I went to Annie Say again. I went Annie shares drama school. Oh when yeah, I was yeah, younger. yeah, It was lit. We had like Dizzy Rascal in it. our class. Wow. And um, we had like a guy that played Martin. He was mad tall from EastEnders. He was in our class. There was quite a few people. <laughs> Reggie Yates. We went to like loads oh, of people. I love Reggie. Reggie's His docs are amazing. Yeah, man. Like, His docs are incredible. He starts them on MTV actually. The one on Spike Nation. But um. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. But I was in the bill and you I got remember. Gasworks, didn't you? We you no. He said it on club? half. He was talking, so we had him on half class one once upon a yeah, time. But we had Spike Nation. Well, on Gasworks. Right, right, Wait till right. you see the return. Oh my! But they're back on. Looks, looks no, no, no. Works. The man's coming to reveal everything. By the time this comes out, the reveal would have been out. It's gonna be mad, which is another headache in itself. But wow. yeah, man, it's um. I'll be honest with you. That whole situation, bro. Look at me. <laughs> I know. I know, Vij. I know. But I know. It's a long story. Oh. But um, yeah. When I think about acting now, it actually is a. It's a huge responsibility and oh, it's a cool. lot on your mental state. And I think I've come aware, I've been become aware of things mad late. Like you think you're late, bro. Like I'm in my thirties, bro. So I've mad, found out things right, mad right. late. So that just means that, oh my God, you mean this is all what's happening when I lived in this warped reality. Mm. I have not got time to take on like loads of different perspectives yeah, to yeah, make fair. me question myself. Like I'm too, I'm actually terrified. I'd have to. I need a couple more years before I don't sound like that. I'm terrified. Yeah, 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 terrified. One hundred percent. I'm terrified. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm also terrified of being late. Imagine I got. A, we got to conclude it because oh, I got cool, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, I think we've done well. But I'm fuming because this What's is your, mad cool. It's no, good, but it's been great. I, I mean, loved it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for coming and me having for the chat. wings. Sorry, I was too was self-conscious to eat them on camera. But what are we saying for the for the future? Anything we can promote? And I know you're in Midsummer. That looks like a mad movie. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Midsummer came up. Um. Do you know what? It's so this is so annoying. Like I can't. I Sounds so lame because we've been so honest with each other. I can't actually say what that's I'm doing next. That's what I prefer, though. You know? That's what I prefer. But, but, Don't worry. Um, but yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm uh, something coming out um, kind of later next year, and then I start a new project in in January. So great. Um, yeah, but yeah. Sorry, that sounds. We can no, meet in real life. Should we meet in real life? And it'll be good to meet in in real. Yeah, life. maybe we're away from the cameras. Away yeah. from cameras yeah. and the microphones. But look, that. shout out Will Powter. If you don't know oh, him, you, you probably I have been living it. under yeah, a rock. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. No, thank you. But I loved it. Thank you. He's got the amazing eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> acted in uh, acted in the Revenant. Uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio that's a great movie you guys need to watch that bro. Revenant is a banging movie oh, I watched that on the plane oh what a film bro. <laughs> oh I was sick thank you bro and then obviously the um, 
the, the meet the millers and yeah loads of other stuff just check him out on the socials as well maybe not the socials in real life when you see him say hi because <laughs> we're all on our journeys right now <laughs> do you know what we didn't do what you gotta do it at the end though what's that you didn't introduce it you didn't do the intro that was um this podcast yeah we're here with uh <laughs> With Will Powter, or as I was calling him, the poet Will Paltry, um, <laughs> and he is eating chicken. So it's so calm, then, isn't it? It's true, Today he's Will Paltry. Uh, yeah, hope, we hope you enjoy and have enjoyed that. That was the intro and the outro in the same time. I'm so mad to. Well, thank you very much, thank brother. Thank you. Have, have a nice. Have a nice. Oh yeah, have a nice. Have a nice, my brother. Yes. <laughs> thank you, bro. How long was off? That's like no, no, good chat. I'll be honest with you. Alfie. That was about. Oh, he's our forty again. Our yeah, forty, yeah. Our 40. Look, four forty-two. We started three. He was here. Remember on time. I'll be honest with you.